Caps fam, I have got one of the best kept secrets in all of the galaxy to explain to you in today's video. The only Grand Arena tool you guys are going to need going forward to scout your opponents. And it's something you can use on a very high level, on a very, very deep level if you want to. And it is brought to you today. I'm, I'm bringing the creator on today's video, Omega. How are you doing today, my friend? Thanks for having me on, man. Dude, I am so glad that you are taking time to explain this to the Cubs fan. We're gonna we're gonna break all of this down. But before we get into it, tell tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, what what kind of inspired you to uh, not just play Galaxy of Heroes, but be one of the the brains that's putting together nerdy stuff like this for us? <laughs> oh, you know, I've always been a Star Wars fan since I was little. Uh, I love Star Wars. Uh, I, I saw the original. Uh, trilogy in the movie theater on that old sorry guys nice um and a couple uh i think in july somebody in my alliance said hey it'd be really cool if there was a you know bot that did statistical analysis and, and kind of showed over over weeks what happened in GAC. you know you can see what happened in any, any particular week but nothing shows you the trends and uh, my career is as a developer so i Started dinking around with it, uh, you know, wasting time at work, and came up with this. How many of us in the chat waste time at work for something Galaxy of Heroes related? Omega is just like all of us. He just has the skill set to turn that dinking around into a super useful tool. Um, I, I got to say, man, as, as we've broken this down today before we started this video, I don't think I've ran into a bot that is this valuable for people. So I, I just want to thank you for the work you're doing. This is really amazing. And right now, this bot is free. For you guys to use i understand you are going to be uh taking taking a patron uh here pretty soon so you can get some level of compensation for this which i think you should absolutely do but for now people can get in there for free right yeah but it's all free right now uh there'll be some functionality of this that remains free permanently uh but you know i do have to make some money and this, this bot costs money to, to host so uh there'll be some reduced functionality for people who don't pay that's that's super good of you. So good stuff. Uh, so let's let's get into the bot. Then we we have a lot to break down. And so to give you guys an idea, this is a Discord bot where you plug in your ally code and your opponent's ally code, and it spits out all of this data at you. Uh, data that pulls uh, exclusively from .gg. Or are you able to back end into the game? Um, I do not back into the game currently. Um, I've been in some talks with Hot Utils and some other people about you know maybe working together to get a little bit more out and you know i i really appreciate the the, the praise on the bot there bob that's the only tool but uh i also do strongly recommend hot utils for everybody it's, it's a great tool buy us both there you go the the, the dev love uh, for, for the developer community love to see it and yeah hot utils does obviously some amazing things as well um that can, that can help you guys get ready um, so, okay, cool. So .gg uh, required for this, which most people, you know, in, in the top end of the game, you're going to be going against opponents who are on .gg. So what you guys are seeing in front of you right now is as if Omega here plugged in me as his opponent. And so we are going to scout my roster today and kind of learn a little bit about what I'm doing. And Omega is going to be able to kind of point out some weaknesses that we can exploit, which should be pretty easy. And so these these top three graphics, just to quickly explain them to you, this is showing the defense that I set over weeks 67, 68, 69, and 70, okay? And then the next one is showing the offensive teams that I decided to use. And then down here is the teams that I faced. So not necessarily one for one, like it, it doesn't necessarily go one for one on uh, which teams I'm facing here. This is just in general. What teams do I struggle against? And so let's talk first about this top graphic here, um, Omega. Breaking down the defenses, you've got uh, color coding here. So the blue column or the blue color represents teams that my opponents had no problem beating. And then the losses are where my opponents got losses against it or, or had a quit or a timeout, right? That's exactly right. And so you're running this report for four weeks in, the, in this case. Um, so each team was on defense a maximum of 12 times. Um, but you notice there that Darth Revan has 17 because you can attack 
when you fail, you can attack multiple times against it. So right. even though the maximum was actually 12, you have 17 there that you know, skews it a little bit. Right. Yeah, and that, that's important to keep in mind. We'll talk about that here. We got a little bit of a skewed data point here with General Veers, uh, which are something you're going to need to uh, think about when you're looking at this. Um, now, you've also got, I, I think this is maybe where some of the most usefulness um, comes from this graph. It's something that I have not seen yet. I mean, it's got the banner breakdown, which is the black line here, which is definitely good, especially when you're looking at, uh, you know, what teams I struggle uh, with getting good banners on. But then uh, what's even more interesting is seeing the attack order here. This red line here shows what teams did I typically get hit first on. And so the teams with the lower average are the teams that are the most likely to be on the front wall. And so if you look at this, you can see CLS 2.4. CLS is almost always on my front wall. And in fact, yes, I have put CLS on my front wall almost every time. Garth Revan, same story. Jedi Knight Revan, same story the few times I did set him. Uh, crew tends to be on the front wall. And so it really gives you some good data on what you're most likely to see, not just as a whole, but what you're most likely to see first. So, cool. All right, let's let's break down the second graphic then. Um, this is offense used by me. So, what what do you use? Um, you had a really good breakdown on this. I'll just let you kind of explain what this graphic tends to tell you when you're looking at what offense your opponent tends to use. Obviously, first of all, what what teams do they have? What uh, we don't. What shouldn't you place on? Because you know they're what good counters are or whatever. Right. Um, the, I think one of the more uh, sneaky bits of this graph is the attack order yeah. here. So you can see which teams they use early in the round against a front wall. And, you know, maybe you can sucker out uh, a team in the front wall and then play something in the back wall that needs that counter. Mm. I, I love that. Yeah. So you can see here right now, for example, gas is one that all 11 rounds, right? I used my gas. Maybe you scroll up just a little bit. We can't see the names. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Um, gas for all 11 rounds. He was used on average four. So he's almost always used on the front wall. And so if you want to trip me up, put something up front that's going to probably easily draw my gas out because it gets used early. And dump something on the back row that gas might str that, that you might need gas for. Um, so that's that's really good data. And then I love this here as well. This is the uh, my opponent's defenses. Let's see. No, no, no. This is uh, this is the teams I struggled with, right? So this breaks down your opponents. What defense do they historically struggle against? And so Mon Mothma. <laughs> Mon Mothma. Four battles here. I, str I, I lost against Mod Mothma, which is accurate. Uh, I hate to see it. Now, one thing that you want to pay attention to on this one, though, um, is not just where the losses are, but like right here, General Veers. I got zero banners ever against General Veers and five battles here, uh, three of which were quits. This actually, we'll be able to show this on another part of the graph later, but this was actually one round where... It was the last team on the board. The guy had placed almost every GL, and I was just taking literally the bottom piss-poor part of my roster against General Veers, hoping for a miracle, and didn't get him in, in five rounds. So that doesn't necessarily mean, in this case, that that's like, oh, place Veers, and I'm, I'm bound to, to lose against it, right? Yeah. I was actually uh, looking at AP Games' uh, girlfriend's account yesterday, and she had a 60-tall... Uh, against Darth Revan, that she you know she threw sixty teams against him and actually beat it in the end. She she had something that finally took it out. No way! Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So cool. So a lot of a lot of good data here on these graphics that you can use. And what I, again, what I love about this is you you may just look at these three, get yourself an idea of where your opponent's at, and then right here we've got a great uh, pair of graphics. Your mod comparison here is broken down and we've got kind of like an average score that he gives. If you want to explain that, you can. Uh, but also what, what I think is even cooler is the attack timing. It breaks down when your opponents attack relative to when the GAC starts. And so down here, um, this would be like an hour after the attack phase starts. Up here would be like an hour before the attack phase ends. So you can see here, I'm kind of all over the board. <laughs> yeah, you're all over the board. And uh, 
no dig here, but you're, this is a pretty boring graph uh, in your case because there's, there's not a lot you can get out of this. Yeah. What's much more interesting is sometimes you see something at the bottom where there's very early three, four attacks, and then that same color dot is at the top of the graph, you know, 20 hours later, that they cleared one zone and then waited to see what happened yeah. and then, you know, finish at the end. Um, but you can really see this is the kind of person that, you know, they're a last minute player. Don't try to outweigh them or you're, Hey, they always attack early. Maybe you could wait and see how they do before you attack. Yeah. If you saw consistency there, uh, that would be very, very interesting, uh, data. So, um, all right. Yeah. Mod comparison kind of speaks for itself. I think, do, do you want to, is there anything you want to talk about as, as far as your mod score that you give there and, and kind of what that, what that helps people with? So mod score is basically just a really uh, quick and dirty way of evaluating mod quality, only looking at mod speed, not paying attention to synergy, primary set, what characters they put on. It's just really how fast are your mods, uh, you know, because for so long the meta has been speed. You can place crap, crap mods that are high speed on, on characters and win. Um, so it's just a starting point. It's, it's not the end-all be-all of, uh, you know, mod analysis. Cool. Yeah, anymore, I, I feel like uh, mods are an important analysis point for me in GAC, but n I'm, I'm more concerned about the team comps nowadays uh, because a lot of people just have the good mods. So, All right, so we've got this bottom graph here, which we're going to talk about, but uh, this is just... So when you put plug this, gra uh, this, uh, this bot in on Discord, you get two things that spit out. The first is an image, and the image is what I'm looking at right now. There's also an HTML file that you can download and open on the internet, and it gives you this right here, which gives you all the same data, but it also has more interaction with it. And so we're actually going to look at that right now for uh, this bottom portion. So this is basically the bottom portion of the graph that we're showing right now. Same, same comparison, but it's going to be um, more interactive and in showing... You can see here we've got underlined um underlined characters that can give us mod information but before we get ahead of ourselves tell, tell me what this is this is telling me here oh your very top couple of lines there are just around results you know who they faced each round how many points they got each round you know who the winner was pretty straightforward yeah. and this is this the, is showing me so this will be what this will be showing your opponent when you put exactly. this in yeah yeah and so to, to clarify uh, we're running this, you know, against Cubs. This is a great tool to run against your opponent. It's actually also a really great tool to run against yourself yeah. to, to do some self-analysis, see how things are doing, what works, what doesn't work. Yeah, so what you're seeing here is, so now if I'm looking at this as myself, I'm looking through her and I can see how many banners my opponent scored against each individual team. 59 banners against my SLKR, 47 banners against my Luke. And if it, I can look over here and kind of see the average of what those banners were. And, and really, if it, where this is really valuable, I think, more than anything is look at where the, where the high banner matches are. Where's the high banner matches? Those might be teams you consider, all right, this is not doing anything for me. My opponent is regularly beating this for high banners. And so that might be a team that I want to consider taking out. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the first row there that you're looking at is really the same data as in the bar graph, the first bar graph, how the defenses worked, but it's broken out by round here. So you can really, you know, see what happened each individual round. Um, and you can and click yeah. on these characters and it shows you the mods for each character. Now, quick disclaimer, that is the way that the mods look in .gg right now. And so if something changed... Uh, during the lock phase, so, some people like to move their mods around a lot. Then it, there could be some variance there. I, I think most people don't do a ton of moving around of mods anymore, but possible that they're different. And you know, there's certain teams that that's really valuable for you. Like, do you outspeed the enemy's resin? Do they have their Imperial Troopers clocked right, you know, to take their turns in the right order? Are they running fast Padme or slow Padme? You know, there's certain teams that that's really valuable for. Other teams maybe it's not so valuable for. Yeah. I'll leave it up to the user to decide what they what level of information they're interested in. Also note uh, that the bolded characters, uh, the bolded teams that you're seeing include Galactic Legends, which is very useful for like GL Luke here. Or, or sorry, for uh, Je Jedi Knight Revan. So Jedi Knight Revan, is a, that's a Jedi Knight Revan team with GL Luke on the team. And if you click on there, it'll, it'll actually show you that there. The, yep. you know, Jedi Master Luke Skywalker's there. Yep. 
great. Okay, and then finally, breaking down the bottom portion of this, uh, this gets into more specifically uh, the team compositions that were placed on defense every time, right? Yeah, so the, as, as we go, uh, you know, column to column across, you can see how the team comp changed. Uh, I think we saw on your Darth Revan that you changed him up, that you started out with Darth Malik in that second and third week and then dropped Malik uh, the remaining weeks. You can yeah. see those comp changes. Yeah. And then you can see the teams that were brought against that and how they did. I just realized that my Darth Revan got a hold against, uh, against uh, Sith Eternal. In that first round, <laughs> I'm not sure how that happened, but I'll take it. So, uh, yeah, good, good, good to know. And you've got uh, the breakdown also underneath of what teams were were used against it and what the banner totals ended up being. And then at the very bottom here, you've got all of the teams that I used on offense and what I used them against. And so remember that Veers team. You can see here. There's the Veers in the same round. That's the only time we ever saw it. Four losses, and I was using Aura Singh, Rolo, Tarkin, Chief Nevitt. Like, desperation. Okay, so I don't really need hey, to put a, a ton of stock into that. Up, up, up a little higher, too. And, uh, J oh, yeah, Django. Ex yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so just really good, really good information here. Anything else you wanted to break down with that? Uh, actually, one more thing up in the defense detail section. Yeah. Uh, um, on the furthest left column, uh, this is only in the HTML version, uh, but there's links to counters there and oh, yes. links to the particular mods for that leader. Um, there's no way to do that in image, so obviously you don't get that in the GIF version. But um, you know, if you see that they use something on defense and you, you don't want to jump to the, the counters, you can you can get to there easily. Um, and this is your particular grievous here, you know, in GG. Um, so you can you know, see the information. Um, yeah. There. Yeah. This is amazing stuff. So, all right. I hope that's a good enough breakdown for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to fill up the comments below. And I am leaving a link. Uh, Omega, tell everyone where they can find you so that they can get this bot downloaded into their Discord to use. So if you go to omegabot.thesenate.gg, that'll take you into my Discord. Uh, there's an invite command that the bot has that'll drop move it into your Discord. Uh, or you're free to hang out in my Discord and use it. Uh, the, the bots, uh, I think, got a couple hundred servers now, so you might see it around at, at various places. Cool. And uh, like we said earlier, it's free for now. Uh, this feature in particular is going to have some Patreon wrapped around it. In the future, uh, we'll see what the, what the remaining free functionality is. Well, yeah, so get, so get in there right now for free because we're going to, it's going to be paywalled in a little bit, uh, but understandably so. I mean, with how much this, this is bringing in, obviously, you're spending your own money to run this thing. And I just, I, I just, I want to thank you for the work you're doing. This is probably my favorite Grand Arena tool that I've seen to date. So nice work, Omega. Thank you very much for having me on. It's been awesome. Yeah, you bet. All right, guys, links down below for all the good stuff so you guys can use this in your grand arenas. Thank you so much for joining. Like the video for awesome members of our community who are putting together amazing grand arena tools. And as always, my brothers, don't forget.